say this, you better live out how you spit it. Don't be equivalent to subtraction. I give you the difference. A truck full of work and a tank full of gas. That's yeah. the soul. Hey, how's it going? This is Ed Lee from NYC Street Legends. I'm here today with my the singer of my favorite band right here, Passage. Okay, they're awesome. Okay, and this is MC Nullis over here. So just here to find out a little bit more about Passage, you know, let y'all know what's going on with my favorite band. What is Passage? Uh, we're a straight-edge hardcore band out of New York City. Uh, our members don't eat meat, so... Okay. We try. We try to keep it real. Uh, try to keep it heavy, aggressive at the shows, and you know we try to spark a dialogue with our songs. You know, uh, reach out to to different communities. Hardcore is a is a worldwide phenomenon, and it's a great opportunity for someone like me to to meet new people uh, outside of my city and also within my own city. Uh, all different types of people, okay. but many different ideas. You know, and who are might be outliers of their own community, so they're more attracted to, to this one. Like, okay. you know, so. so when you say the word hardcore, right, I know you guys have like a typical rock setup. You guys have a drummer, you have a bassist, you have a guitarist, you have a singer, right? What is what make, what is hardcore? What makes hardcore different from, let's say, metal hmm. or, you know, all the other punk or all the other different classifications or subgenres of rock? What is, or is it rock? <clears throat> you know, what is, yeah. what is hardcore? Yo, you, if you ask this question to a thousand people who like love hardcore, you're gonna get a thousand different answers. Okay. Uh, hardcore, you know, just to start out with, like, just you just gotta kind of know the history of it. Uh, hardcore is pretty American in that it was, you know, our interpretation of punk rock, and so the original hardcore bands, basically, from the late '70s, they just played very aggressive three chord songs okay. that were fast and Who the shows the were crazy. I would say some of the first bands were like Black Flag, okay. Bad Brains, you know what I'm saying? And then you have some of the bands that came a little bit later like Chromax, Minor Threat, um, and then later in the New York scene like Youth of Today. Okay. Uh, what else is there? Like and in New York like Earth Crisis that okay. came later. And every one of these bands kind of is an evolution. So now and I, Al Passage, yeah, <laughs> and no. Al Passage yeah. carry the legacy, carry the torch. That's right. um, I think I I tell people basically what well, hardcore is. It's it's its own genre. It's kind of in between punk and metal. Okay. Uh, due to like what happened in the '90s with a lot of like crossover, and basically the you still had the energy of the fast songs. But they they brought in like a lot of the heavier elements of, of metal, and then okay. now it's 2014, and you have all different all sorts of different bands who call themselves hardcore, even though they could sound completely different. So it's really a, a unifying like theme, I guess, of of the music that makes you hardcore. It's it's. You know, some would say it's your uh, DIY ethics, you know, because most of the bands that started it did it everything themselves, booked the shows themselves. Okay. It was it was a youth culture for the youth, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And um, they they made their own distribution channels themselves, and it's it's just like a really amazing thing that happened back back in the 80s. You it's know? like something really street, something really organic, something from the ground up. And I have absolutely. I have a question because you also said vegan, right? I know you guys don't eat meat. That's totally cool. I think that's actually very good because honestly, meat is not really a sustainable product. Um, I have to admit, like for now, I'm still eating meat, but this guy's really influencing me to really think about not eating meat. I just think that it's just not good for the environment. It's just not sustainable, and I don't want to keep doing it. Um, I'm just worried about like you know the nutrition, but that's another video. Right? We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that, but yeah. I remember we talked about vegan, right? Vegan is not just not eating meat; it's just any animal-based products at all. So that means no milk. Yeah, no it's, eggs. It's it's a right. uh, it's a way I guess of of looking at the world right. and looking at what you consume mm -hmm. and just being conscious of that. So any animal products strictly, so you know animal source products, right? Yeah. yeah. So not just consumption like you put in your mouth, but like what do you give your your money to? Um, right. okay. So I'm not gonna go buy a leather jacket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not gonna go buy a wool. Wool um, 
scarf or something like that because those come from industries that profit off of animals. Depression, you right? know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a very complicated issue due to the fact that you can you can be culturally insensitive and you know to me everything's like has to be contextualized. Personally for me the easiest like the easiest metric is just I live in New York City, I can get everything I really need without having to pay for an animal to get to be used, right? Yeah. Um, you have to understand that some places on this planet are very different from New York City or America. Um, that's obviously another video. Are you Personally, still, for you're me, still rocking that crazy six pack. Yeah, I like, mean, let them see. Know, honestly, because nah. honestly, right, a lot of people say vegan people, super skinny, they can't really, they look sickly. Yo, check <laughs> another this out. video, another do video, it, do man. It, man. Do it. Yo, yo, you gonna make me do this shit? Yo, honestly, think about the people out there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, I, I understand that you want to be humble. I understand that you don't want to like, show it off. You know what I mean? But <laughs> honestly, there's, there's going to be someone out there who watches this video who's going to say, look, you know, I was thinking about being vegan, but after that, because I'm not getting the proteins that I need and this type of stuff. And honestly, this, it's convincing for me, right? It sure. makes me really think, like, I could get to my, my, you know, body weight goals and stuff like that. So just check out. Just take I mean, a second. <laughs> this guy's got the illicit six pack, for real. Yo, yo, honestly, for let's me. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> Do it. Mm. Yo, 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 <laughs> do yo, that yo. shit. Come on. Right, yo, yo. This is this is this kid's crazy, man. This crazy is embarrassing. Rip. This is embarrassing, yo. It was crazy, yeah. Rip. Yeah, yo, that's really good, man. For a vegan, you know, um, that that's nuts. It's, that is super nuts, it's, man. That, yo, I give it's you mad functional. Props it's yeah. functional. You know, like I think what what is important that's good, yeah. is is you know, it's it's gotta help you do what you want to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And the last part that I remember saying you were a vegan. Straight edge hardcore band. We talk about the vegan, we talk about the hardcore. What is straight? I know a lot of people might not know what straight edge is. Let's find out what straight edge is all about because this is really what past edge is kind of their identity, right? Yeah. So what is straight edge? I, I would say uh, we're not a vegan straight edge band because uh, not all of our members are vegan. You know, okay. we're we're all you know we're all vegetarian at least. Okay. Um, and it's complicated you know labels whatever but straight edge we are we are all, all you know edge, yeah. uh members of passage i think what makes passage a really special band is like the members we all come from very different upbringings and backgrounds so we we can bring our experiences into our songwriting in like yeah. a really weird combination um but we all share in this belief that uh it's not necessary to consume alcohol drugs and and smoke you okay. know what i'm saying and I mean that just makes practice and and having a band, you just eliminate like one thousand yeah. percent of like the headaches of being in like a heavy band. I'm not saying that's like a anathema to like to 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 all your other problems. You know what I'm saying? Um, but basically, in the end, we all have a lot of fun sober. Uh, and we we try to address that w within our songs because in our community there's like definitely a lot of like drug use and and we live in a society where it's it's not okay to smoke weed but you can just drink and then probably drive home and, and kill somebody you know what I'm saying and and these are things that should be talked about um, intelligently with with information. And we hope to, to use this platform as a way to, to spark that dialogue, you know? Uh, it's important to us. And I, I mean, I, I'm just real. I lucked out because I, I always love um, playing with straight edge people because I just don't want to deal with, like, people hungover at band practice. You know, I don't yeah. got enough time for that shit. And me claiming straight edge for eight years, people know me as that dude who will never give you a call and be like, yo, dog, sorry, I'm... I'm I'm too, like, fucked up right now to come do what I told you I was going to Like, people know me as that dude who's like, all right, he might be 15 minutes late. You know, he might be half an hour late, but, like, he's not going to be fucking strung out somewhere and we can't work with. You know what I'm saying? And I yeah. expect that, at least that from everybody. It doesn't matter if you drink or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's just, like, please, we all have to respect each other's time. And, and i just rather be more efficient in what I do with people who share in my own beliefs. I mean, it's it's the same with anybody. I respect you know? that work ethic and also, like, you know, we also go to something we call, like, uh, is it RBG Satellite? RBG, yo. Yeah, it's just about Shout out, Dead Press. All right, cool. <laughs> it's just all about being all you can be. So I really, um, 
like that mentality. You know, I like the, uh, you know, social responsibility aspect. And uh, being straight is something that I think is cool, actually. You know, a lot of people get into drugs and stuff because they're experimenting or they just want to see how much they can handle. You know, honestly, it's just kind of a juvenile thing. But once you are really mature enough to really, you know, try to be all you can be and be strong for others, I think straight is really the, um, the end result of all of that. You know, and I really like that about this guy. And, yeah, I just want to say, like, it's just a label. It's just a... Uh... It's a label that creates a sense of community, like an imagined community. Um, you can be totally sober and not have to claim this this label. Like I just, I got into straight edge due to hardcore, cause hardcore and straight edge go like hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Okay, cool. Um, but like you mentioned, RBG, like Dead Press, Stickman, he had a mixtape called The Workout, and uh, he he mentions being a sober soldier, and I'm sure Stickman might never have heard of straight edge before. You know, no, it just shares those values. Yeah, but it's like we were going on parallel roads and reached the same conclusion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't you don't have to claim this to to smoke less or drink less. You know, everyone fights their own battles. Just because you're straight edge doesn't mean you're better than anyone else. And and I I completely sincerely believe like actions speak a lot louder than labels. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You can be straight edge and be totally status quo. Yeah. It's it's really how you use the tool, and yeah, so I, it it just frees up so much of my time that That's I can cool. I can devote to other projects. You know. Why did you yeah. start Passage? Well, what was the you know? Well, it really started when I started meeting people in New York that uh, shared my ideals and loved hardcore. Okay. Uh, hardcore is it has has a barrier to entry, which is like resources. You know, you have to come from a certain background to be able to even afford to play you have to have your instruments and stuff so I understand you know why certain people wouldn't be into it but where I was at that time you know I just I love the music and I feel like it's a it's a cool it's a cool uh, space to, to exchange ideas so I was meeting people and I was very fortunate to just meet uh, uh, our guitarist George um, Shout out to George All right. and uh, on Tumblr, and uh, we got together. I had another cat out in Philly, Alex. Um, he was like really crucial in starting it, and then we were just writing songs and trying to find the direction of the project. And you know, shit, man, like two years, three years almost. Damn, three years now. We're still together. The average lifespan of a hardcore band is like six months, so we beat that. <laughs> we got over that. Um, but you know, like we, it's Did not our Alex, job. Does he play the bass? No, Alex is is uh was our original one of our original guitarists. He's not in the okay. band anymore. Okay. Um, he had definitely a lot of other shit he had to deal with in, in Philadelphia. So now we're completely New York based. Uh, we consist of myself, George, Griffin, and Josh. Uh, we are in four boroughs. You know what I'm saying? Not not Staten Island. Shout out to Staten Island. <laughs> But um, we 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 come together, do our thing, you know what I'm saying? Try try to try to create as much as we can, and then try to stay afloat. You know what I'm saying? New York City is a tough place. New York is a hard place to play hardcore, and you know so we're really lucky. To, what is, what to, is the New York scene like? What is New York is New York is that city where a lot of bands come to to play. Okay. And if you are a band here, you got to deal with rent. You know what I'm saying? You gotta deal with space issues, scheduling issues. So I understand why there are not many uh, new New York hardcore bands that can really blow up. You know, um, we definitely still have the OGs around. You know, like Sick of It All. Uh, we have Chromax. You know what I'm saying? And we have we have really great shows here, but we have a lot of small shows too that like definitely don't get enough love. Just cause everyone's just so busy, and that's not anyone's fault. That's just that's just the nature of the beast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, in the end, I think there are some really great bands people should definitely be listening to. Um, Sangharsha, you know, it's like a all How do you spell that? Sangharsha is like S A N G H A R S H A. Okay, I'll um, put a link up if they have a website. Oh yeah, know, yeah. All, yeah, all Nepalese like hardcore band. Oh, Nepalese, nasty, what? yeah, okay. nasty. 
um, annulment. They're they're out of Long Island. You know what I'm saying? A uh, shout out to to Vice from uh, Staten Island. Young dudes fucking works hard as fuck, and the music's heavy. Right. And uh, lastly, man, oh fuck, Jakai, man, like shout out to Jakai, um, putting out great shit. That's that's all I'm really listening to these days. Um, but there's like so many bands I, I miss out, you know. I would I would recommend everybody to come out on Saturdays to the matinee shows at ABC No Rio. I'm I'm usually there taking pictures, uh, for for the space. It's like a DIY space, a community space that has matinees. So it's like it's like early shows and early end. You know what I'm saying? So like if you got work, don't even worry about it. You know, like you can do your thing at night, whatever. You know, come out in the day. Cool. It's really cool. It's a really cool space for for people to come all ages shows you know kids we want we want young people to come out and like experience what it is to like live in a diy culture you know where like we do shit ourselves sure. without corporate backing without like money we don't know where it came from you know so um it's, it's a privilege to, to to be part of this community you know for yeah. sure yeah uh okay so i know you guys just got back from tour in china that was awesome right um, you guys have some relationships in China, things like that. Uh, I'm very interested. Kind yo, of like a worldly type thing going on. What, what's the yeah, thing? yo, tour is tour is tiring, man. <laughs> but yeah, China showed us so much love. I used to sing in this band called Hutong Fist. Uh, it was a Beijing straight edge band. With we had two singers, and my other singer has his own band called It Never Happened. Um, but I'm actually wearing the hat right now. It Never Happened. Shout out to them. All right. Uh, they. Should we bring it closer so they can see yeah. the logo? Yeah, check it out. Man. Never happened. All right, cool. I'll put the link in the description in the um. Yeah. Once again, right here. Yeah, Tongwei Fashion. They. We tour with this band. Uh, it was all China tour. Uh, Eleven shows, ten cities, in two weeks. You know, so we played a show every night, and China is like awesome. It's the shit that we saw, the development, the. The, the people, how warm they were, how well we were received, and how how much people are 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 de- like elevating themselves with with new knowledge and and new perspectives. This was mainland China, right? Not this was mainland. Taiwan. Yeah, exactly. This was mainland China. So we started in Beijing and we went all the way down south to the city called Zhuhai, which is right on the southern southern edge of of China on the ocean. Beijing is in the north. For those of you who think China's like a big block, <laughs> um, there's many cities in it, super city. So it's like every city is like bigger than New York. That so I know you're, from, I know you're Taiwanese. Is Hutong Fist? Is this um or the well, bands with? Are those Taiwanese bands or is this? No, I, I want to say I'm Taiwanese. I, I mean I'm, okay. I'm, I'm no no I'm I'm American. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. Chinese American. Um, I grew up in I grew up in Taiwan for a little bit. So, uh, Hutong Fist was completely a, a local band. Like, okay. my other singer was from Xinjiang. He was a Han Chinese. And I, then, I wasn't there. I didn't know. But yeah, I, no, no. I'm learning now. No, I'm no, learning yeah, now. exactly. No, yeah. I'm not, I don't expect you to. Yeah, yeah. it was... It was really cool. You know, the coolest thing about the tour was when... uh, Was when bands we toured with covered my old band song. Cool. And I got to sing that shit. And awesome. that was, like, so fucking cool. That is cool. Yeah, that's fucking cool, man. Um... I'm really glad we did what we did back in the day because we wrote some lyrics we really believed in, you know what I'm saying? In Chinese too, so we sang all in Chinese. Passage, we sing in English because um, we never planned on going on a tour in China, for real. It, it just happened and uh, fucking so grateful for that. I think it's amazing. It's an emerging market. You know, so, I mean, it's already there. It's like a huge market. It's actually a large market in the United States. Oh, yeah. Um, you know? Yeah. Just that, that connection is amazing, you know? Yeah. I really don't know people that are doing stuff like inner country like that. So it was pretty cool. It was. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, it was. It was stoked. It was like I can't even. I'm trying to think of like one thing that can encapsulate the experience. I, I think what was the coolest thing was uh, we got to play the Chinese Hardcore Festival, China Hardcore okay. Fest, um, CNHC. Uh, it was like co, uh, co organized by this organization that uh, I co co founded called CUA China United Action. Cool. And it's a and this was a third third time it happened, third annual one, and we just got to play with some of my heroes. You know what I'm saying? Like King Lichi from Hong Kong, it's their fifteenth year, and they killed it. You know, and we got to play with all of my other favorite bands. Like shout out to Demerit, uh, Own Up. Shout out to fucking Own Up. 
Beijing Hardcore, you know what I'm saying? The last the last resort, Beijing Hardcore. Um just like fucking awesome to see these dudes like living the dream, you know, like back in 08 when I was there, all we talked about was like hardcore, hardcore, hardcore. And now it's like it's so awesome to see it actually taking off and and people taking notice. You know what I'm saying? We have to be careful about who who's controlling it, you know what I'm saying? Who's who's constructing the narrative of like what right. it is? You know, like, were they around in the beginning? Like, what's their interest in it? You know, yeah. but all in all, I think it's it's exciting. It's again, it's a privilege to to be even remotely part of it. You know, but yeah. sounds awesome. New York, New York's dope too. So I can't complain. I'm I'm in like one of the best cities for for music and and culture. You know, so, absolutely. That's why yeah. actually I came here myself. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Um, so I have a question. Um, I know you're working with. Actually, you mentioned several bands that you've worked with. Are you working with any other musical projects right now? Yeah, uh, I I also do hip hop. You know, hence the name MC Nautilus. Like yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no universe. We're we're dropping hopefully a full length by the end of this year. Working really hard on that. Okay. Um, just a lot of stories to tell out of New York. Uh, the the theme of this project is basically just like hard science fiction. So, okay. um, I do like that. Yeah, so it's like all like cyberpunk and because personally I'm I'm an engineer, so my environment, you know, I don't I don't fucking gangbang or gun clap and shit, but I am around technology all the time, whether it be in the form of fucking building technology or robots and shit like that, and I get to I get to be in places where I see what's what's about to happen, you know, I'm not I'm no some you know I I'm no prophet, you know, I can't tell you what's gonna happen in ten years, but like. I can kind of feel the general trends of what's what's going on, and I like to put that in rhyme form. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and tell stories with it. You know, I think I think the only way culture changes is through art and and storytelling. So okay. uh, I want to play my part in that. You know, write my own story, um, write the story of my community, and not let other people write it for me. I'm working with this really talented producer. Also in New York, Bronx Josh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, vegan Straight Edge as well. It's like a vegan straight edge. We would call it a vegan straight edge dystopian hip hop project. Um, all our thing is like we only sample from science fiction movies. Uh, that's how we make all our beats, and all I talk about is like weird technology and a lot of social funky implicate. tracks, sound effects. That's a Samples. great. That's a great yeah. place. To yeah, to draw it's a niche, man. It's, it's a awesome. niche, but that's that's who we are, you know. Just like two nerd nerd motherfuckers, <laughs> like who who love hip hop, you know. Yeah. Who love boom bap. So cool. we're we're trying to do that, and uh, yeah, use some vocab along the way and shit. No universe, yo. Check check out the video. It's sick. Subtitle. I'll yeah. put a link to the um the video actually right there. And uh, how else can people get a hold of you into your language? SoundCloud. You guys yeah, Passage, SoundCloud Passage is on SoundCloud. Okay. It's also on Spotify. Uh, our EP is called Amber Trails. It's on there. You can go go listen to that shit. We're I'll also on Bandcamp. Right there the spot up to the Spotify thing. For the sure. Bandcamp will be right there. Yeah, Bandcamp. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. We got we got a Twitter. We got a YouTube channel. We got we got everything. Check out our video. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so when um, they're in the Twitter, where they just type in passage. Yeah, uh, you know what? It's gonna be in the description. Put it in the link. My, my, and uh, George we'll George handles that shit, so so I gotta I gotta hit right. him real quick. Oh, we yeah. just got the uh, the new URL xpassagex.com, right? So the website oh, hell yeah. Awesome. yeah. And that should also have all the links, but I'll put them all in this video right here, so you have it. Um, what about that other one? The uh, the hip hop. I do love no the universe. Yeah. Hip-hop. That's yeah. also on Spotify. And all That's how we met, man. Through hip hop, man. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah, no universe. We have a video on YouTube, uh, okay. and with Put that, that with too. that, yeah, with you know, we're we're taking our time with that shit. Um, I have I have a lot of features that uh, I work with I'm with super other excited. MCs. Super excited. Um, I like rap. Yeah, out, outside outside of no universe, so we can post some links to that shit. Uh, working with some MCs on on California. I got a little other side project in Philadelphia, a mm-hmm. uh, six song EP coming out with a really talented producer. Cool. Uh, Wino Willie, shout out to Wino. All right. So, uh, you know, it's all love, man. Like, fucking, what a what a great time to be alive. You know, it's sunny outside and shit. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, dude, for sure. Bye. Bye.